the Iraq war has created a huge surge in the number of troops returning with post-traumatic uh, stress syndrome. These symptoms include uh, heightened physiological arousal in response to stimuli associated with the trauma, such as when they're immersed in simulated combat situations. They exhibit heightened startle responses, heart rate, blood pressure, muscle tension, and skin conductivity. One of the most successful treatments for PTSD involves use of our old friend skin conductance uh, biofeedback. The nice part about it is it's so simple to, to use. Um, it provides an objective indication of the physiological responses to traumatic injury, imagery. And it can help patients learn about how their responses and to, to control them better and to control their anxiety, which is really an important aspect in the process of recovery. So here he's got the sensors on his finger, and this is a typical response curve. It's just relaxing, then suddenly he may see something that bothers him, up it goes and comes back down again. This is a, an interesting application. Our, our new software now, now can monitor with two cameras, uh, two individuals, a couple, and do couples therapy with it. And it's like a physiological video recorder. We monitor the individual's physiology. At the same time, we're monitoring the uh, audio and visual activity. So we can replay after what happened. You can say, did you notice when he said this to you that you got this response and vice versa, when she said this, you got this response? What were you thinking at that point? So it's a very, really very useful, and our, the whole community has been waiting for this. And we finally got this. This is actually coming out in a couple of weeks in our new software. Some of the non-medical applications of biofeedback include its use in sports, multimedia presentation, artistic performances, gaming, virtual reality, performance, uh, peak performance training uh, for anyone looking to function at an optimal level. Many teams and individual athletes use biofeedback to train themselves to visualize actions in their sports while at the same time controlling key physiological parameters indicating ideal activity. Often live monitoring is used while performing the sports, such, in, <coughs> such as in golf, archery, or in skiing. This fellow beat the world record in downhill skiing several years ago, and thanks uh, my partner Larry Klein. So what does India's Olympic gold medal winner have in common with Italy's soccer team and NASA? First, this summer, India won its first gold medal by an athlete trained in air rifle competition. It was their first gold medal, period using our FlexComp Infinity system. He was taught to monitor his breathing, heart rate, and other parameters and fire only when the ideal combination occurred. This event adds to the success of thousands of professional and Olympic athletes who've trained with our equipment over the last 35 years. Secondly, um, several years ago, we helped Italy's AC Milan soccer team establish its mind room it focuses both on enhancing the player's skills and developing their psychological well-being. Whoops, my pen fell apart. The mind room includes 11 identical stations. You can see them over here, if I can make this work, where the, where the um, players sit. And they, each person has a headset and his own computer and hooked up to our FlexComp Infinity systems. The psychologist is seated in the next room watching all the players on a bank of monitors as he prevents videos of actual plays and other verbal and visual stimuli. And the idea is for the, patients to, the, the players to go through this and keep themselves stressed, to keep the stress levels low while watching things like you know, dropping the ball and doing things that didn't work out quite the way they wanted. Oops, doesn't want to advance. There we go. The main goals are to teach them through biofeedback to discover their ideal physiological state to control their emotional responses, and to maintain their focus no matter what adverse situation may occur. The Mind Room has yielded excellent results, including a 90% reduction in injuries. Now, this is really important if you think about it. They play these, pay these players between one to five million dollars a year, and they have something like five fewer players. So they're saving themselves a fortune just in this, and also not have, because of the injuries, they don't need as many players. Many of you will recall the incident um, in a recent soccer game between Italy and France where the French player headbutted the Italian. Well, what did the Italian player do, do you recall? He did nothing because he'd been trained, he'd really specifically been trained for something like this to just be calm. On the field, you do nothing. Off the field, it's your business. 
And that's, uh, that was the beauty of the demand room training. The third thing is we've worked with NASA for over 20 years by supplying them with off-the-shelf and customized products to help them monitor and train astronauts. Um, they've worked with space sickness and, in this case, with isolation. Um, one project involved a collaboration to develop a small ring sensor to be worn to monitor skin conductance, temperature, and heart rate. The latest project uses our FlexComp Infinity to wirelessly send the astronauts' physiological data to a PC to study the effects of isolation in a confined environment 65 feet below sea level. Biofeedback is being used in creative and artistic ways. Uh, here's an example from Dr. Steve Mann's D concert, which created uh, brain made music from 30 different subjects. This, uh, he actually had 30 of these pe- people hooked up to each one of these, and he compiled their brainwave activity into music. And, Apparently, it did not sound very good, but it was definitely an, an interesting experience. Currently, uh, the McGill School of Music has just uh, purchased 65 of our systems to um, monitor the emotional, physio- physiological impact of music in both the musicians and on the audience members. And our <coughs> in our writings, we have Jordan Deacher, who's collaborating with others at McGill in the creation of what we call the Emotional Imaging Composer. This is an entirely new kind of multimedia instrument that is played using one's emotions as they're tracked by our sensors. In a recent show at the National Theatre School entitled Si Sensible, So Sensitive, the real-time emotional state of an actress was projected all around her in light, sound, and visual images as she interacted with her audience. In November 2000, I spent three days in Times Square monitoring the illusionist David Blaine in a block of ice with our ProComp Infinity system. We monitored his heart rate, his body temperature, and respiration rate. And uh, on the second day, he was complaining. So I said, how about if I do a relaxation exercise with you? So I said, okay, now think about your muscles relaxing and breathing evenly and deeply, breathing in, relaxing, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all of a sudden there's silence and then there's a curse. He'd fallen asleep and banged his head on the ice and he was very upset. But anyway, he survived with just some edema in his feet. and we had, this was projected on the screen in Times Square, which is kind of fun. Does anybody recognize this guy on the left? I mean, on the right? <laughs> in 1986, we introduced Compute with Leonard Nimoy as our spokesperson. One of the games is called Compre, and the idea was to get your race car through the racetrack as fast as possible without hitting the walls or the potholes. And the unique feature was that as you, if you got stressed, because we were monitoring your skin conductance activity, the car would slow down. So the only way you could get through the course was to relax. And of course, as it speeded up, you'd get stressed because you'd hit the walls. And so eventually it was teaching you performance under stress. And this is a, it's an example of how games can be used in a positive uh, way to help both kids and adults develop uh, resilience to stress. And here's our latest refinement to that game, which is built into our Biograph software. Uh, controlled by a child's brainwaves or basically any other activity. It's similar to the sailboat that I was showing you earlier. Researchers are combining biofeedback with virtual reality, which immerses you into a simulated environment, providing realistic experiences and emotional responses like the real world. Users generally put on a pair of goggles like these to create this illusion of reality. So what they actually see is they only see, they, they actually, it seems like they're actually in the world. They're completely immersed in this world. The example here is from a study with airplane phobics. And um, you can see that he has, you know, you're sitting in the chair here looking out the window and they actually have the sounds of the plane taking off and it, it, abs- it really creates the same kind of a stressful situation as the real time, the real world. Uh, the other VR applications include uh, walking between two 10 foot, 10 story buildings for acrophobics and being immersed in a virtual battlefield to help treat post-traumatic stress syndrome. I think a good one would be um, virtual public speaking. (laughs) This is rated as the average person's greatest fear. We actually came up with a program called Public Speaking with Confidence years ago, which combines GSR biofeedback with training in public speaking techniques. 